Hello and welcome to another video for my uh, Vintage Electronics channel. And what I felt I needed was a Variac to go with all my other test equipment which I'm putting together. Uh, so what I did, I bought four uh, Variacs um, from eBay. None of them were working and um, all listed as parts, um, but I paid no money for them, about £47 plus um, £10 delivery. And just one working variac of the specifications I've got um, would be about £70 in working condition. So I think it was worth the gamble. Um, what I actually received was actually three variacs and one uh, Berkerstat. Um, initially I thought that Berkerstat would be useful, but the specification as such, probably not going to be used for me. Um, I mean, actually, when I looked at it, um, the coil had burnt out anyway, so that's going out for spares now. So uh, I'm left with three Variacs. So this video is how I go about renovating um, one of those Variacs for my own use. The other two uh, I'll do up as well and look to sell those on and get my money back. Um, so that's where I'm at. So let's see how I get on. So what is a Variac? This is also called an auto transformer. It is a means to provide a variable AC supply. It consists of a single winding of what is generally an iron core. The winding is usually tapped about 7 eighths of the length. The AC input is connected between this tap and the end of the coil. The neutral wire is also connected to the end of the coil. A wiper connected to a rotary knob is then able to tap into the coil windings to provide a voltage for the output. You can think of this as an AC potentiometer, but resistive potentiometers generate heat. The auto transformer does not, or at least not in the same way, but it certainly will not work with DC voltages. We can get a smooth continuous variable AC voltage at the output. The last one eighth of the coil allows us to attain voltages above the mains input. The magnetic lines of flux in this coil induce this extra voltage. One thing to note is that the neutral output is connected to the neutral input. This means the Variac is not isolated. This can pose a danger to a person or equipment, so you may need to connect an isolation transformer between the Variac and the device under test, or better still, a dim bulb current limiter. Lots of information is available on the internet for the danger this poses, so I won't go into any detail here. But with any mains-based project, be aware and take every precaution to be safe. So this is the uh, Variac that I've chosen to keep. Um, it's a Regulac and it's got a decent specification. Output is 0 to 270 volts with a 240 volt input and it's two amps. So it's quite a decent specification, Claude Leon Limited uh, of England. So things I need to do, there's a kind of a tape over this that needs to be taken away. It actually spins fairly well. One of the reasons is compared to the other ones it's it's not dinged in the case, it's not been damaged. Uh, so I think that's pretty good going. There's an issue here uh, that doesn't seem to be fixed at the bottom. So this I believe is the output. Um, what I'm thinking of doing is just printing a plate to go to screw in there just to cover those holes and then um, have a grommet go in there. Um, I want a connector on the output lead which will then allow me to plug in some standard main sockets, uh, even some test points. So I've got a, a variety of options there. Also plugging it means I can store it a lot easier. Uh, this is the input here. It's got a fuse so I might reuse that fuse holder. I believe this is the mains input. Grommet seems to be okay, might be all right to use that. Um, work out what's going on there. And I'm guessing this is a switch, an on off switch, and I think we can replace that. Um, it'd be good to have one anyway. So that's kind of um, what I'm gonna do. I need to strip it down. That'll be my next task, see what's going on. We'll um, give it a good clean up electrically and give it a test. Hopefully there's nothing to do other than that. And then uh, it's just do the modifications to this area here. 
So I can see the problem here. This um, standoff has severed there, uh, which is causing this to be wobbly. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get that out. Um, what I do have though is plenty of material here. It might be possible to um, just drill through there, maybe put a thread in each side here and then just screw it on from the side, uh, bolt it through there and I think that'll work. So probably quite an easy fix. Uh, I will try and get this out. I might be able to um, just put a new standoff in place there and just carry on, but it seems quite weak. So maybe it'd be better off doing uh, what I plan there. Uh, get the first look at the copper windings as well. So I'll carry on with the strip down. So that was quite an easy strip down. Actually, just take the case off. You can see this little runner here. So this needs, well, the whole thing needs a good clean up really. I'll just use some contact cleaner or some uh, isopropyl alcohol just to, to clean up the actual contacts here. The whole thing looks very intact actually. So I'm quite pleased with that. I'm pretty certain when they do some continuity checks on here that it's gonna be, it's gonna be fine. Um, yeah, it looks in general con con good condition. It's just a little bit dirty. Um, the case is in good nick. I'm not going to spray the case or do anything with it. Um, just clean it up a bit again and put it back on. I quite like the original condition. And I'll get rid of these wires now because um, they're no good, obviously. And um, yeah, uh, we, we're in a good place. Oh, actually, yeah, it's interesting. We've got this clean dial on the back i think this is kind of the opposite way so it depends how you wire it up flip that over to get north or 260 degrees uh, 260 volts so that's what i think it is anyways but I'll, I'll i'll check that out um when it comes to the appropriate time so i just want to do a continuity check really uh here let's just put the Probe on, so I'm getting some resistance there, so it's not dead short and it's certainly not open circuit. I'll just put it on this part as well, so I'm getting resistance. It's a lot higher resistance, I'm curious about that. Um, probably because there's lots of machinery in, in the path there. Indicates to me that it probably needs need to clean up. Oh, I don't know. I'm really just measuring the resistance there. Yeah, definitely getting something. So, you know, I think basic electrically it's there. Um, I think it's purely a case of just cleaning up, which I'm going to get on with now. So I've taken the base off just to see if I could um, free up that screw which was broken. Um, that's not going to be the case, so I'll go back to that initial plan. So I've actually just been just clearing, cleaning up the uh, contacts with some isopropyl alcohol, really. And you can see it's pretty, it's pretty grubby. And... I think it's just a case of just working this and just making sure that I can get the cleaner contact as possible, really. So I've given this a, a clean up. I'm pretty much getting readings all the way around now which implied to me I was getting intermittent connections. I've cleaned this up fairly well. I'll probably give it another go just to make sure. Uh, but to me, that's not looking too bad. Um, yep. So I want to get try and get this tape off. Um, this has always been effective in the past, this uh, sticky stuff remover gel. I'm going to give this a go, and it's just on a small part, um, just to see if I can lift some of this tape. 
So I don't really know why that's there. But we'll find out. So the sticky stuff remover seems to be working. It just needs a little bit of time to soak in. You can see when it's sprayed on, it sort of reacts with that. And my fear is that it takes the uh, the paint away, but it seems to be pretty stable. So I don't really want to give it a lot of rubbing action or abrasive action. So I'm going to let this really soak in. I'll just take it steady around there and just try and get this tape off. So I wanted to attach this front piece onto the case and remember the standoff on the bottom here was snapped and I couldn't um, fix that. So I've used this top standoff and the idea was just to put some taps into the case. Uh, I haven't put a bolt through this one. Uh, it works very well. I've got a bolt in on this side and it's actually very solid, probably stronger than uh, when it's first made. Uh, I need to get another M4 bolt. I haven't got a suitable one. So I'll just complete that job. I've got to um, design a, a plate here to cover this, to allow the cable out. And really I want to move on to actually testing the Variac. And I've got to wire it up to test so my idea is really just to go ahead with the finalized wiring um, there's not much extra work to do so i'll do that anyway so that's the next step so what's my plan for wiring this up i do want a modular system such that i can add an isolation transformer if needed but to start with there'll be an on off switch in front of the fuse there'll be a second switch that can be used to switch in or switch out an i meter or current meter and I also want provision to add a voltmeter so I can get accurate readings of the output voltage rather than just relying on the dial. Okay, so I'm at the point where I want to test the Variac and you can see this is all open here so you need to be exceptionally careful if you're going to be doing this sort of thing. But I did want to test it before put it all back together just to see if there's any smoke. Um, what I've done, I've connected it to the dim bulb current limiter and I've just got a meter connected to the output. Uh, I've also earthed the frame. Uh, so that's the final wiring configuration anyway. So it's just a question of uh, turning it on. The dim bulb should protect against any shorts. Uh, so just looking at the uh, multimeter there. As I dial this up, you can see that's actually increasing, so I'm fairly pleased with that. And just wind it up. Let's just bring it up to halfway, roughly. Yep, about 140 volts. This should go up to 270, 280 volts, depending on the mains. And we're going past the 240, bring it to the end. Yep, 280 volts, so, so that's pretty good. So to me, that's working great. Just bring that down. Okay, let's just turn it off. And what I need to do now is put it back together. And I need to design and manufacture the mains outlet, which will go onto this plug here. And then uh, we're finished. So it's on to Tinkercad to design the uh, main socket and I'll able to modify the existing design for the dim bulb current limiter so it's quite an easy job and it also gives me a similar look and feel uh, amongst my test equipment. So this is the plug adapter finished I think it looks quite neat. Um, I've got connections here for an ammeter, a current meter and a volt meter here if I need it and I can switch the current meter out so it just plugs into here and what I've got remember UK plugs have fuses in so I've got a 3 amp fuse on the primary I've got a 3 amp fuse on the secondary here and that goes into the plug so uh, all I need to do is uh, give this a test so make sure that's down to zero let's give it a plug in 
get my uh, voltmeter. And switch it on. And that looks like that's working. Let's take it up to the full. There we are. So that side of it's operational. Um, what I think I'll do, I'll go and get a piece of equipment just to plug in because uh, I won't mind testing the uh, current meter. So my first challenge was actually finding uh, a multimeter which um, reads AC amps, uh, which I have done. And uh, hopefully when I turn this on, we'll uh, get some readings. And uh, there we go. So that's the current side of it working. You can switch that out. That should drop down to zero. That's the uh, current meter back in. Uh, my load is, uh, is working. So uh, yeah, up to half an amp there. Let's see what we do. Uh, it's taken up to uh, 240 volts, 750 milliamps. And oh, that's working really well. Excellent. So there we have it. Um, I've got a working Variac and that's really all I wanted. So I didn't go too mad with this. I can't really call it a renovation. I just wanted to make sure it was safe, it was working, um, renew the wiring, just give it a good clean up, build some attachments and I think it's job done. So this is going to go into my armory. It's going to get used uh, regularly, got projects lined up for it. So if you like these videos, then please do subscribe and share as well. Appreciate all the uh, comments and feedback I've had. So I'll catch you with the next project.